Hello there, Quicksilver Slash, and today I have a game from Savea in the Tier 6 Premium Japanese Battleship, the Ashitaka. Really, it's a battle cruiser, and that's kind of what differentiates it from, say, the Nagato, is the hull is a lot less armor. That said, talking to Savea and a couple other people who have played this ship, they really seem to enjoy it. And, you know, maybe we'll see a bit of it, but... It kind of makes me think of the Congo, two tiers lower. Uh, you know, it's a fast ship. Its armor's not great, but it's got some decent guns. And you put those things together, you can get a deadly combo. It's also why I think there is room in the future of this game for a kind of like battle cruiser, like heavy cruiser, light cruiser split. Because the playstyle of these ships is different. You can't play the Ashitaka like an outright battleship, in my opinion. Uh, kind of similar to, say, the Dunkirk. If you just think you're going to play it like any other battleship, you're going to get yourself in trouble and get melted by the enemy team. But you play them right, you use their strengths, and you're going to get some kills and damage on the board. Now, Saveo is playing alongside Flying Goomba, and one of my other friends, Turles, they're all in a clan together that... They started up really just as a means of getting some of those benefits without any of the competitive side. And, you know, if someone's looking for something like that, I'd consider poking Savea. It's lots of room, to my knowledge, and uh, from everything I've seen, more than willing to jump in there with new people and help them. I have played in Division alongside some of them as well. Now you can see so far Savea has been kind of just shooting at whatever presents a decent broadside target. And early on, I think this is the best strategy with any battleship. I've gotten the question so many times, what do you think is the better thing to do? Focus down a low health target or focus down one target or take better shots? And my answer always comes down to, well, what's happening in the game? Early on, like this, no one's dead you know, if this was a domination match, cap points wouldn't even be taken yet. Take the shots that are going to get the most damage on the board, that are going to hurt ships the most. Like that Nelson taking that 10k hit there, I can guarantee you, is thinking, hmm, maybe I shouldn't push as hard. And if you make a couple ships do that, you slow the enemy team's push, and it allows you to focus down singular targets. Now that said, later game... As ships start dying on both teams, you really want to make sure you're getting rid of guns off an enemy team. These shots looking half decent on that Omaha, one Citadel, for a good chunk of that light cruiser's health. And funnily enough, I had a game the other day, I was playing uh, alongside Turles and my Nicholas. It was a losing affair, and I think I had Savea there too. And then Omaha came around a corner, point blank, turned broadside and died. And they're like, oh, I was so stupid for doing that. And the reality is, in one of those cruisers against a battleship, you're just eating the citadels. And that's kind of the one crummy thing about some of the light cruisers. They can go right through your nose, no problem. Now, two of Sevea's teammates die right there. One of them being Goomba. I featured a game on Saturday of him surviving to the end, doing a lot of damage, so it's only right that I return to the content you all expect. F exploding flying Goombas. Now that Omaha may be behind an island, but with him spotted, his smokestacks giving away his position. Savea takes the shot. Unfortunately, all the shells missing. I think the Omaha punched the engines just a bit to get some space. Now at this point in the match, there's no real need to panic about everything, or anything. Two kills aside, uh, I think Turles is getting into a little bit of trouble here, getting really close to a Sharnhorst, which could see a lot of her Ashitaka disappear as those Torps dig in. But hopefully, Savea can return a bit of the favor, 9k there, decent volley, and at this point... I'd say it's time to really start focusing down one target. Ships are starting to die, especially a lot of people on Savea's team. So in my mind, start with the Nelson, 
then the Scharnhorst, and just one by one as a team, start eliminating targets. Well, and you can see the friendly Scharnhorst there, the Baker Dave, returning the favor, or at least coming close to it, a set of torpedoes just missing shark bait. But Savea gets another shell in, only 2,000 that time, and Dave eats a big hit. Things are really not looking great for Savea's team here. But this is really one of those places where something like a battle cruiser, something with more speed, can really come into its own. Is when ships start to get eliminated, that ability to move around the map and quickly reposition can become a strength. Savea takes a aim at the Nelson's bow, three citadels just going right through. And well, there's one ship, the Scharnhorst, I think flooded out from that air torpedo drop. So they've clawed back two kills. And unfortunately, there are a lot of aircraft coming this way. The one saving grace, there's at least one fighter squadron to help protect. And for Savea, well, that enemy carrier or carriers seems to be choosing to focus on the Sharn. There's the Omaha again, sailing outside on. Not the best strategy. And you can see Savea actually split his gunfire there. One volley at the Omaha, one at the Atlanta, just picking the ship that's side on. And right now, he's not a happy camper. Two sets of torpedo drops, pretty much a perfect cross drop. Catches Savea for some pretty big damage. One of the things that definitely helped was that damage control was just on its final few seconds as those second set of torpedoes hit meaning there's no floods. That is going to be crucial. A great hit to that Nagato. Hopefully this time some torpedoes can land and it doesn't look like they do. Meanwhile, down at the south, you can see the friendly Hatsuharu was bravely trying to defend the cap, but it's too little, too late, or really not enough ship to take on a Bajoni and Farragut. And... There goes another ship. So now all there is is Savea and two carriers to try to pull off a win. And I gotta say, things are not looking good. It's right now that you wish you're in something that had torpedoes, perhaps a Mutsu or one of those German battleships. As Savea just eats continuous damage, the Atlanta basically having free reign to sit there and just pepper Savea. These shots need to count, and they do. Okay, one more ship gone. Savea's got a fire burning that he desperately needs to put out. This is one of those situations where you just have to go with it. Yeah, he could have gotten lit on fire again, but he could not afford to eat any more damage. This Omaha really making it too easy now. Sitting what looks like perfectly still. He'd be dead already if these guns loaded just a little faster. But they will eventually load. You can see Savea kind of taking his time. One turret firing. Eager to save his shells. Maybe... Well, worked out actually. Secondary is finishing the job. And there's a third kill. Up to 127,000 damage. Meanwhile, down at the cap... The Ranger and Ryuju have taken care of that Bajoni and Farragut. Which means there's an Atlanta somewhere over this hill and then a pair of carriers. And they really could pull this off. And what I'm noticing, at least from the map, there seems to be fewer and fewer enemy carrier squadrons about. And, well, this Atlanta, he's probably dead just in time. Savea getting away with 1,000 hit points with that Atlanta rate of fire. One or two more shots could have been the magic ticket to uh, end Savea's game. But with one more ship down, that is one ship closer to a victory. And I can't believe how quickly the enemy team started to melt after establishing such a hefty lead as far as hit points and just sheer number of ships on the map go. 
but it goes to show you know i want to say they spread out and in a way they did you know the bajoni and farragut they were down here alone you'd think a bajoni could deal with some of that aa pressure but apparently not meanwhile with these enemy carriers seemingly running out of squadrons it gave Savea the time to just one by one eliminate those enemy ships and i gotta say i think the atlanta up here in the north made a mistake he was sailing trying to get into cover i think he expected at some point the shells to come his way but with the guns facing at that Nagato, that Atlanta could have just sat still in the open, much like the Omaha did, and really put some damage down, and I think ultimately that hurt their chances of getting rid of Savea. That said, with the way these Allied carriers are playing, also safe to say, I think they could have taken the game themselves. Savea did a great job up here in the north two citadels on that indie ending his game picking up the kraken and well that might be all she wrote the hero clearly running away well outside of gun range and while the ashitaka is quick i don't know that the hero is going to be around long enough for Savea to get any shots off a pair of torpedo bombers making a beeline straight for that lonely CV. And now it's got to be a pretty crummy time to be that Hiryu. At least if you're at the high tiers, you'd have defensive AA on a carrier. Something to help you protect yourself. Now, it does have fighter squadrons. You can see them coming up. But that can often not be enough if somebody knows what they're doing with these drops. And it's kind of looking like they do. They manage to get them into the water. And there's another three squadrons coming. Two bombers, one torpedo, and there's the first of the torpeds. The one thing that may help Savea get a six kill is the fact that the heroes run into the map edge. One of the things I actually dislike about this game at times. There's certain instances where just having a little bit of extra ocean would go a long way in changing the outcome of a battle. Now this is an arcade game, the limits are there, you play within them. But coming from an actual Navy background, there you, you didn't do stuff this close to land. It was always open ocean. Or at least how we did naval stuff here. Like, we did patrols in closer to islands, but that was mostly for fisheries. A lot of the training and everything is... It's for open water, blue Navy. You're going to mess other ships up. But at this point, I am going to kill the replay. Savea is going to get some shots off, but I don't think it's going to be in time. And I'm pretty sure it's one of the friendly carriers who finishes the job. So let's jump to the post battle. Well, as you can see, Savea did not get that final kill on the carrier, but still walked away with a Kraken. 640,000 credits, almost 6,600 XP. Uh, just a litany of... Uh, heroic achievements just shy of 172,000 damage and came away with a win in what felt like it was going to be a loss now looking at the team score you can see Savea there at the top but the two friendly carriers who carried a lot of weight here are in second and fourth respectively which always great to have the good carriers on your side and it can suck when you don't and in this case they made all the difference they stopped this from becoming a capped out game and in the end Savea took home 550,000 credits and that you know 6,500 XP and it being a premium ship half million credits is what you buy these for I'm a little sad I didn't get the Ashitaka I think I would have enjoyed it when I went to buy it, it was like two hours after the sale ended but she'll be back and for those of you who have no interest in buying a premium ship at least you get to see what it can do it's nothing amazing to me it's you know a congo with some extra guns it's quick but thinly armored anyways i hope everyone enjoyed this if you did please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel and as always i'm quick silver slash i'll have another one for you all later